Oh, shit, yeah. Shocks are pretty good too. Time to see if these bad boys fit. First job is to remove the uh, rolling trolley wheels and put it up on the sill stands. Unfortunately, the, uh, the rolling wheels mount to the suspension points, so I can't have both. It's a bit of a shame. Really enjoy being able to move the car around at will, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to put some uh, more appropriate wheels on very soon. So we'll chuck the uh, bottom arms in first. Uh, a couple of small mods since last time. Welded in these little ferrules into the arms to um, give the dampers a nice square face to, to mount to in there. And uh, just chuck these little spreader bars in there to sort of help spread out the, the vertical load through the damper. This is where hopefully uh, spending the time adding that uh, captive nut in the chassis pays off. I won't do that up tight yet. I'll um, wait till we get the car sitting at ride height and then I'll go around and uh, tighten all the uh, suspension bolts up just so that the um, the Nile Thane bushes are uh, in their sort of normalised position so they don't get too stressed out. Next on the list is the, whatever this arm is, what are we going to call this? Sort of the, the front cast, lower caster arm. All right, blind luck hasn't worked. Ugh. All right, I think it's time. Good start. Now, this is the wrong size bolt. I, for some reason, forgot to order this bottom bolt, so it's not quite long enough. It's long enough to uh, for us to install and keep keep going on, but I probably wouldn't wouldn't want to do too many rallies on it. It's just lacking a little bit of length. Oh yeah. Good times have ended, I think. Got a small issue, uh, or what could turn out to, an, to be an issue. The, um, the head of the damper is, is quite large and it's um, very, very close to the bottom lip of this clevis. Uh, it, it will probably clear, but I'd hate to bend the damper by uh, jamming it up into that, that edge. So I think unfortunately, I'm going to have to get the angle grinder out and just carve a little, a little clearance in this bracket. I've got a little bit of the, uh, the red paint left over, so uh, I'll touch it up afterwards and um, we'll just keep that as a little secret between us. So I thought I'd better check it uh, before I start uh, ripping into the chassis with the angle grinder and it is so close. It is just touching um, as it comes up in, in the stroke. So um, it'll probably be all right, but I think I'll sleep better at night if I just give it a little bit of clearance. So I think I'll just go to this, uh, this second marking here, 
which should be fairly easy. But another issue I've found along the way is that um, they have machined these top mounts uh, incorrectly. They've machined this to half inch, not 12 millimeters. So there's quite a bit of slop on that bolt. These holes are 12 millimeters uh, and there is no way I'm getting a drill in there to widen those out. So it looks like I'll have to machine up a couple of these aluminum fittings. They're just two separate fittings that, that push into the uh, spherical bearing there. Not a big deal, but it means I've got to do four of them, two on each side. Um, so that's going to slow me down a little bit. to where we were. Now, be um, this is a bit of a tight fit, and there's a bit of paint in there now. The newly rebuilt upright, uh, new bearings, all packed with grease. I've got a uh, a bearing spacer we machined up in between. last thing we need to do up the front here, I think, is actually mount our external damper reservoirs. I've uh, got a whole bunch of these. Um, they're uh, spotlight mounts for bull bars, but they happen to be the right um, diameter to match uh, our reservoirs. So I've already modified this one. Uh, I was pretty sure the reservoirs were going to live up here somewhere. So... Um, 
yeah, sort of machined off the tag that was originally used to mount it and uh, welded this little bracket on. And that will fit up in here, something like that. And uh, so I think we'll just drill and tap into that chassis rail and um, should be done. So I think that is it for the front. Those brackets have gone in there well, little cable ties to uh, neaten up some of the uh, routing of the hydraulic lines. I'll rip those brackets off, give them a quick coat of black paint, uh, clean up the workshop because it looks like a bomb has hit it and we can move on to the rear. Clearly got a little bit more painting to do, but uh, I think all the suspension is in. So uh, that means there's only one thing left to do. We have a rolling chassis and it is nice to see it on its wheels for the first time uh, after hanging out in the air for so long. That all went together pretty well really considering it was all based off just drawings. A couple of clearance issues here and there but nothing too major. Uh, the rear camber, I've already checked that and uh, it's within half a degree of where we want to start with plenty of adjustment so that's really good. Ride height wise, um, the rear's obviously sitting a little bit high because there's no engine uh, and the front's maybe a little bit low. Of course, we've got a bit of a, a forward rake because of uh, no engine in the rear. So uh, anyway, it's all well within, well within the ballpark and there's heaps of um, height adjustment on the coilovers for, uh, for ride height. Obviously, uh, still don't have an engine. Uh, the old COVID lockdowns are causing a bit of havoc with that, also with the brakes. Um, hopefully that'll be sold very, very soon, but uh, 
Come on, rolling chassis. That definitely deserves a beer. So, till next time, thanks for watching.